Okay, in this video we're going to talk about number 5 from the uh, 2015 BC Calculus exam. Um, it's kind of a different type of question, and it's kind of gross. So we are given this uh, weird f of x is 1 over x squared minus kx, um, where k is a non-zero constant, and then we're also told the derivative in terms of k, and then uh, they just keep giving us values of k, or we have to find values of k, and then solve problems about it. So uh, let's, let's see what we can do. So in part a, they tell us k is 3, which would make f of x 1 over x squared minus 3x, and I need an equation of the line tangent to the graph when x is 4. So um, f prime of x, if k is 3, ends up being uh, 3 minus 2x over x squared minus 3x, that quantity squared. Uh, so I need to know the y value, so I need to know f of 4 by plugging in. I get f of 4 is 1 fourth. I need to know f prime of 4 by plugging in, which gives me negative 5 sixteenths, and then point slope my line. So I get y minus 1 fourth is negative 5 sixteenths, the quantity x minus 4. That's part A. Um, so let's move on, where we have changed k to 4 and change what we need to do. So if k is equal to 4, um, they tell you what f of x is, and f prime of x is 4 minus 2x over x squared minus 4x, that quantity squared. So I need to determine if f has a relative minimum, maximum, or neither at x equals 2, and then just find my answer. So, first I'm just going to factor the uh, derivative a little bit to make it easier to determine uh, the sign change, if there is one. So I factored an x out of x squared minus 4x, so I have the denominator now is the quantity x, mi x times the quantity x minus 4, uh, like all squared. I mean, it's written right there, so it's harder to read than it is to look at. And uh, that can be rewritten as 4 minus 2x over x squared times the quantity x minus 4 squared. So, first of all, f prime of 2 is definitely equal to 0, uh, because the numerator is 0 and the denominator is not. And now what I'm going to do is make a number line and look at f prime and decide what happens on f. So on my number line I put 0, I put 4, and I put 2. Uh, 2 is uh, the 0 of the numerator, 0 and 4 are zeros of the denominator. Um, and I need those on my number line uh, because they can impact sign changes. So if I test the regions, I end up with a positive from negative infinity to 0, positive between 0 and 2, negative between 2 and 4, and then negative from 4 to infinity. Uh, which means that f is increasing, increasing, then decreasing, decreasing. I like to do the little arrow thing there because it, it helps you really kind of clarify what's happening. Like you can see right now that at 2 there is definitely a relative maximum. So let's uh, write that up. So f prime of 2 is 0, and f prime changes from positive to negative at x equals 2. Therefore, f of x has a relative maximum at x equals 2. And that's all there is to part B. So let's take a look at part C. In part C, we're going to find the value of k. So um, we need to find a critical point, or the value of k that makes the function have a critical point at x equals negative 5. So a critical point, either f prime of x equals 0, or um, is undefined, but it also um, must be in the domain. Uh, so that's kind of interesting, because in this case, uh, you don't have to worry about anything uh, to do with the denominator, because the denominator of f prime is just the denominator of f of x, um, so except squared. So anything that would make the denominator equal to 0 um, would also make uh, the denominator of f of x equal to 0, which means it's not in the domain anyway. Uh, so all we really are concerned with is uh, f prime of negative 5 equaling 0. And if that's the case, that really just means that k minus 2 times negative 5 equals 0. The denominator crosses out, um, or like cross multiplies out because it equals 0. Um, so k plus 10 equals 0, so k must equal negative 10. And uh, that's actually the answer to that problem. So let's move on to part d, which involves uh, letting k equal 6 and doing some partial fractions. So I have f of x is 1 over x squared minus 6x. I need to do partial fractions and then also integrate. So I'm going to say it's 1 over x times x minus 6. And for partial fractions, I do a over x plus b over x minus 6 equals 1 over that. 
Um, I like to use a cover-up method. Uh, so if I let x equal 0, that's going to tell me that a is negative 1, 6. So what I do is I, I cover up the x in the denominator on the right-hand side, and I plug in 0. And it tells me that a is equal to negative 1, 6. And if I let x equal 6, I cover up the x minus 6 on the right-hand side, plug in 6, and I get b is 1, 6. So f of x is actually negative 1, 6 over x plus positive 1, 6 over x minus 6. So um, that's the decomposition. And to integrate, I need to integrate that decomposition. And so that's just a couple natural logs. Doesn't, you don't even really need u substitution. So not bad at all. Um, so I get negative 1, 6 natural log of the absolute value of x plus 1, 6 natural log of the absolute value of x minus 6. Um, plus C. And that is all there is to the question. So I hope you found this helpful and good luck.